Hello class, so in this video we're going to talk about the chain rule and how it's used and why it's used and what it is. Alright, so a bit of context. Differentiation of functions, we can easily differentiate them if they're in forms like, for instance, this. You just product rule it and then power rule it within the product rule and you'll get the derivative. So there we can easily find dy dx. But the question is, what about something like this? So like, for one thing, this one up here, you can just, if you really wanted to, you can multiply all those terms out and then just get one whole thing without product ruling it. And yeah, so here you technically could do that, but nobody wants to do that with something this big. So let's not do that. But let's try to get dy dx with this then. So if you were to just do that, then well maybe this does work. Just power rule it. So 50 times 3x squared plus 1 to the power of 49. This is it. How does 3x squared plus 1 come into play? Those are questions that you probably should be asking. Because I mean we did just take the derivative of a function but we didn't do anything with the inside at all. So let's analyze this more and see what we can get. All right, so let's look at it. If we take this and we let u equal three x squared plus one and y equal u to the power of 50, and we want to find dy dx, well, I don't know, let's try something. Well, we have y as a function of u so we can easily find dy du because we got y with a u defined. So if we just power rule that, we get 50 times u to the power of 49. That's pretty easy, right? But the stuff inside of u doesn't really come into play. And also, we want to find dy dx, not dy du. So let's look at it like this. If we have this, dy du times du dx. So you can't exactly think of it as multiplying fractions, but long story short, in this case, it works. So let's just look at it that way. If you get advanced in um, calculus later on in, in the future, don't think of it this way, but for our purposes right now, it works. So if we do this, like multiplying fractions, the du's will actually divide out, and then what you have left is dy dx. So our function is y equals u to the 50th power. So if we did dy du, that's 50 times u to the power 49. And if we did um, du dx, that would be, remember, u equals 3x squared plus 1. We get 6x. Well, doing that, we easily see that dy dx equals 50 times u to the 49 is times 6x. And if we just do that out more, so I'm just going to put it down here, 50 times 3x squared plus 1 to the power of 49 times 6x. And how you should write it is actually bring this over to the front. I'm just going to multiply that all out. Yeah, you know, just do it like that. The main reason is just for readability sake, so you get all the single things and just put them all in the front so that you don't lose track of them and stuff. And yeah, so let's think about what just happened. So we have y of u equals u to the 50, and u of x equals 3x squared plus 1. So what we get is y of u of x. So there's a function of x inside of the function that is inside of u. 
So what we took was the derivative of y with respect to u, and we multiplied it by the derivative of u with respect to x. So now this is going to get us into the actual chain rule itself. If we have a function inside a function, so if f of x, y equals f of g of x, then dy dx is just the derivative of f times the derivative of g, or the derivative of the outer function times the derivative of the inner function, or f prime of g of x times g prime of x. So notice the, the g of x part, that stays the same. This did not change at all. So I've seen a common mistake where when people take the chain rule of things, they ch take the g prime inside of here. Don't do that. That actually doesn't make sense, especially given what we just did. So up here, when we did that whole dy du times du dx, there's nothing happening in there except for just taking the derivative of u. And u is not going to change at all. It's just going to stay there. So let's just practice then. Let f of x equals 3 times x cubed plus 2x squared minus x all to the power of 20. So the outer function here is going to be, I just put a box, so just like something to the power of 20. And the inner function is that. 3x cubed, uh, no, x cubed plus 2x squared minus x. So if we did derivative of outer function times the derivative of inner function. Well, first of all, this 3 is just out there. It's just chilling there. Leave it there. All right, the derivative of the outside is going to be 20 times whatever that is to the power of 19, right? And then the derivative of the inside is going to be 3x squared plus 4x minus 1. Well, what is that box? The box is just this. So 60, I'm just going to multiply that 60 right there times x cubed plus 2x squared minus x all to the power of 20 times 3x squared minus 4x minus 1. And generally, like I said before, you want to make it so essentially everything's increasing in power. So technically this is correct. But you would probably see most people write the derivative like this. So the higher power is toward the n, and the lesser power, this is technically the power of 1, is toward um, the beginning part, and then the numbers are in the very beginning. Alright, so the chain rule is this. It's not too complicated, but it could complicate things. Um, just think of it as derivative outer function times the derivative of the inner function. And yes, when you do chain rule, you can actually get multiple chains within it. So when you take the derivative of the inner, you might end up with another chain rule, such as if you were doing a function like sine of cosine of tangent of cosine of sine of x to the power of e to the square root of x cubed. I don't even want to think about how many... I don't even know how many parentheses that's going to be, but basically you can see that when you do the chain rule of this thing, you'll end up doing chain upon chain upon chain upon chain upon chain. A lot. So when you encounter things that have multiple chains in them, just think of it simply like derivative outside times the derivative of the inside. And then when you're chain ruling the inside, if you have to chain rule again, think derivative of the outside that's in there times the derivative of the other inside. And if, again, you've got to do it again, just keep thinking derivative outside times the derivative of the inside. And that'll make your life a lot easier than trying to... I'm not really sure what people are thinking when they just, like, do a bunch of random derivative stuff. But just think simply and don't change things. And you should be fine. So yeah, that's the chain rule.